Good morning, dear students. I wish you are doing fine. This is a lecture on the significance of the apple tree in All My Sons, the play All My Sons, 1947 by Arthur Miller. We will read on metaphor analysis and the symbol of the apple tree. The apple tree is symbolic. The apple tree in the play is symbolic. How and why? How it is symbolic and why it is symbolic. What happened? Larry's disappearance in the war on the 25th of November is one of the Keller family's great distresses. After the war and Chris's return to work, to work for Joe, his father, the family planted a tree in the backyard to memorialize Larry, although Kate never gave up hope that Larry might return alive. It means that when a family plant a tree to memorialize a person, this per it is because that this person has died. This person is dead. They remember him through planting a tree. But Kate never gave up hope that Larry might return alive, although the tree is planted in her backyard, in the backyard of her house. Larry's tree then is not a hasty memorial, but a fitting one for a dead soldier. A proof from the text that Chris was enlisted in the war. Not only Larry was enlisted in the war, Chris also, his brother, went to war. Keller told Chris, that's a good answer, but it don't answer anything. You haven't seen her, he means Anne. You haven't seen her since you went to war. It's five years. So Chris was, went to war, was in the war, as a soldier also, like Larry since five years ago. The situation in the text. The Keller's neighbor, Frank Luby, asked Joe, what's happened to the apple tree in the backyard? You remember, it was the morning, Sunday morning, and Joe was sitting in the backyard reading the Sunday newspaper and we said that he was uh, reading the announcement, the advertisements only. Here, Frank Luby came to the backyard and asked Joe, what's happened to the apple tree in the backyard? What's happened? Joe says, a storm the previous night cut off the tree in half. It means that uh, the tree now is no more alive. The tree will be dead because it is cut into two halves and lie on the ground, lies on the ground. The text, Frank, noticing the tree. This is the interpretation and here the proof from the text. Frank, noticing tree. Hey, what happened to your tree? Keller, ain't that awful? The wind must have got it last night. You heard the wind, didn't you? In the beginning of the play, as we have read in the stage direction, the tree which was planted in Larry's memory was found shorn in half by the wind in August, 
Do you remember the time setting? It was August. In August. What is the significance of this month for the killers? The same month Larry was born, as Frank has said to Joe. Frank, Larry was born in August. He would be 27 this month, and his tree blows down. What does the tree symbolize before being torn apart? It means that the tree is symbolic according to its condition. When before being torn about, when it was still planted in the, in the backyard garden, it symbolizes something. The apple tree in the Keller's garden symbolize in the Keller's garden before being shown apart, before being knocked down, symbolizes Kate's, Kate Keller's delusion that Larry is still alive. She has a delusion that Larry is still alive. Read this conversation between Joe and his wife. Keller, exasperated. What do you want me to do? What do you want, mother? I want you to act like he's coming back. I want you to act like he's coming back. Who he, whom did, does she mean? She means Larry. Coming back. Both of you, both of you, he and Chris, his, her, her husband and her son, don't think I haven't noticed you since Chris invited her. She means Anne. I want to stand for any nonsense. But Kate, because if he's not coming back, if Larry is not coming back, then I'll kill myself. Laugh. Laugh at me. She points to the tree. Or she points to tree. The tree now is shorn apart. But why did that happen? She continues. Kate continues speaking. But why did that happen the very night she came back? She, she means Anne, goes to sleep in his room and his memorial breaks in pieces. His memorial, his memorial tree. Look at it. Look, she sits on bench. Joe. How do the audience know that Anne Diva has visited the Kellers the night of the storm? How do we know that Anne Diva has visited the Kellers, has visited the Kellers the night of the storm from the following conversation? In this slide, I've printed to you the conversation which shows or which proves that Anne has visited the killers the night of the storm. Jim. You know Jim? Jim Bayless, the physician. Jim, looking toward house. Well, where is the beautiful girl that was supposed to be here? The neighbors know that Anne will visit the Kellers. Frank, excited, Annie came? Keller, sure, sleeping upstairs. We picked her up on the one o'clock train last night. One o'clock train last night. Wonderful thing. Girl leaves here, scrawny kid. Couple of years by, she's a regular woman. Hardly recognized her, and she was running in and out of this yard all her life. That was a very happy family you used to live in your house, Jim. Who is Anne? Anne, Anne. Kate mentioned Anne. Chris mentioned Anne. Jim mentioned Anne. Frank is excited that Anne is here. Who is Anne? 
Anne Diva is the daughter of Steve Diva. You know Steve Diva? Former neighbor of the Kellers and Joe Keller's business partner who is now in prison because he was accused murderer of killing 21 pilots. So Anne Diva is the daughter of that man, Steve Diva, former neighbor of the Kellers. Why former? He's now in prison. As well as former fiance of dead Larry Keller, the dead Larry Keller. Again, as well as former fiancé of the dead Larry Keller. She is a friend to the Kellers then. She's a friend to this family. A little while after Larry's death, she and Chris started writing each other letters. At his request, whom Chris's request, possessive pronoun. At his request, she returns to the Keller home, all grown up and beautiful. Chris announces to his father his plans concerning Annie. Chris says, all right, all right, listen to me. Slight pause. Keller sits on city. You know why I asked that. You know why I asked Annie here, don't you? I asked Annie here means I asked Annie to visit us. Don't you, Keller? He knows, but why? Chris, you know, Keller. Well, I got an idea, but what's the story? Chris, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask her to marry me. Slight pause. Keller nods, nods, as it, it means he says, as if he's saying yes, yes. The father wishes Chris to marry another woman other than Anne and asks him for the reason of choosing her particularly. Chris answered his father, answered his father's question. I can't help it. I know her best. I was brought up next door to her. These years, when I think of someone for my wife, I think of Annie. What do you want? A diagram? Keller. I don't want a diagram. I, I'm, she thinks he's coming back, Chris. She thinks your mother, Kate. Kate thinks he's coming back, Chris. You marry that girl and you're pronouncing him dead. By marrying Anne, you are pronouncing Larry dead. Now, what's going to happen to mother? Do you know? When the mother feels that Larry is dead and will not return, what's going to happen to mother? Do you know? I don't. Pause. Kate views this views this as a sign that the Kellers have forgotten Larry and abandoned the thought of his return. So what would happen to her when she sees them forgetting Larry or Larry will not come back? Anne's presence, the significance of Anne's presence, this is an A. It's a way of writing capital A in one of the fonts of the word. And, the, and Diva's presence in the small town coincides not just with the sharing of Larry's tree, but by the wind, but with the later revelations of Joe's involvement in the production of the faulty parts. Anne is, in this way, the unconscious 
an unwilling promoter of the drama that will wind up tearing the Keller family apart. Not only the tree was shorn apart or torn apart, but the family of the Keller, the, uh, the Keller family also will be torn apart. Kate Keller unfolds her pessimism regarding Anne's arrival. Mother says, no more roses. She's standing in the backyard and says, no more roses. It's so funny. Everything decides to happen at the same time. This month is his birthday, his birthday, Larry's birthday. His tree blows down, and he, came, and he comes. Everything that happened seemed to be coming back. I was just down the cellar, and what do I stumble over? The space ball globe. I haven't seen it in a century. At the play's opening, the scene is one of a prosperous court. The only conflicting element that is apparent at this point is the broken apple tree, which has been knocked down in the storm the previous night. There are still fruits clinging to the branches. The text shows that description. In the left corner, down the stage, stands the four foot high stump of a slender apple tree whose upper trunk and branches lie toppled beside it. Fruit still clinging to its branches from the stage direction. The significance of the image of the shorn tree. Now we have the image of the broken tree, the knocked down tree, not the tree standing in the garden. Now, in this slide, you will see the image of the tree after being knocked down. The fact that the branches are no longer attached to a living stem means that they will decay and die. Of course, they will decay and die. They are not attached to the stem. Although Kate does not yet know it, the delusion that Larry will return is about to be shattered forever. Full stop. I wish you good luck and see you later. Goodbye.